Hi everyone, my name is Spencer. In this tutorial is for people who have never used LaTeX before and would like to quickly get started using LaTeX as a word processor to write IEEE papers. I have linked um, files in the description below, so I'm going to show you how to take those files, quickly upload them to Overleaf, um, and then I'm going to show you some of the file structure within LaTeX and what some of the code means um, and how that code translates to the actual PDF you'll be exporting. Um, I have put timestamps down in the description if you want to jump to a specific topic because we'll be talking about a few things. You have to watch the whole video. Um, but first I'm going to show you the files I've given you to download. I'll just quickly say LaTeX is, uh, is not perfect, but for more complex, technical, or maybe like larger documents, I think it's really useful. Probably the biggest use in my mind is that it keeps track of all your your reference numbers and stuff so if I it's gonna auto number all my figures and then when I refer to one by the name I gave it it's gonna auto number it in that reference as well um, same with citations and equations and we'll go through this um, in a few minutes but um, down here it also auto generates all this that's a really big deal if you're writing like a research paper um, and then on top of that, it's easier to place figures within the text. A lot of times with Microsoft Word, um, if you pull a figure out, it kind of messes everything up. Or if you want to move it to a different spot, it messes everything up. Here, LaTeX is just going to recompile, renumber everything, and you'll be good to go. So that's probably the biggest benefit to learning LaTeX, in my opinion. Okay, so when you click the link in the description, you should see something similar to this, where all these files are available to you. This file right here is a zip file, and this is the one you'll be uploading to Overleaf. So I'm at the Overleaf website. Go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one. Um, you can see I've got other projects listed here, but if I want to make a new one, I just click New Project, and then just click Upload Project, select Zip File, and um, <clears throat> if you go to the downloadable zip file that I gave you and just choose that, it's going to upload the project for you, so we will just wait one second here. So now the project is loaded and it's compiled. Um, first thing, you'll notice that most of this I did not do. Um, a lot of this template, probably 90% of this template, was something I downloaded from the IEEE website. And then I added my own stuff on top of it to make it a little bit easier to digest and as a good reference for someone who's just starting with LaTeX. Um, so all this stuff, a lot of these file structures, I did not I did not create from scratch. I didn't add any of this. This was included. Extras, I didn't add any of this. Pictures, I added all of the photos. And if you'd like to make these, by the way, I have another um, tutorial on how to make professional circuit schematics using Inkscape and I have starter files for that as well. Um, test flow, I didn't do any of this. So I'll show you a few of the files that I generally use and the rest of these um, are not, not generally being referenced for uh, any of the projects I do. So we'll start looking at this file, the IEEE paper example text file. Um, so all this green stuff is commented out. It doesn't change the PDF, the final rendered PDF at all. So you scroll down, you'll find right here, this is stuff I've added that I normally use in my papers. Um, and this is all in the preamble. The preamble is the part of the document that happens before the document itself actually starts. So this begin document statement, everything after this begin document statement um, is probably gonna be printed or really influence the printing. Um, so this use package stuff is really normal to put in the preamble. Um, so here, use package lipsum. That means that everything in this package, it's like a body of code, is being imported so that if I reference any of those functions in the code body or in the document body, it actually knows what those functions mean. So this is like an include statement. Um, and lipsum specifically is used to generate um, random text. So that was useful here because I needed to fill this document with text that didn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to transition for just a minute before we dive too deep into the actual code of the main file. And I'm going to look at BibTeX and explain how useful it can be. Um, BibTeX is going to include a bunch of stuff that I don't know what it does, but BibTeX is basically an add-on that 
actually sorts and numbers your references for you and then builds a references page. So for instance, in the file that I've created, citations one through three are correctly numbered and then correlated and, uh, and built in the references page. So all I did was go into references.bib and include this stuff, which you can find on Google or on the IEEE Explorer. Um, and this is the LaTeX format. So basically you give it all the information and then in the actual paper, you call a citation to it, to, to uh, that reference with this command, cite ABC. You'll notice that in my references.bib, they're named A, B, and C. And then when I call that um, ABC, it actually cites it in the paper itself and then down at the bottom it sorts them and numbers them and formats them for me. So that's one of the major advantages of LaTeX is it autonomously keeps up with all your citations which is possible in Microsoft Word but in my opinion it just feels way easier to do with LaTeX. I've got some examples of things in this file that I think are useful. This is an example of building a matrix that's not numbered like a function. This is an example of uh, including a figure. So but converter is the file right here. I'm referencing that file. I'm sizing it. I'm asking it to be two inches, 2.8 inches wide. So that's this dimension within the column. Um, and then I'm including it right here. This is an example of a double figure where I have a sub figure right here, a sub figure right here. Um, and then a single label right here for both of them. And that the way that manifests is this figure right here, and it's denoted as uh, A. This figure right here is denoted as B. And then the single label for both of them um, can reference both of those. So this is a good way to do double figures. An example of some waveforms, which is right here. So now let's say you wanted to reference one of these figures. Well, say you call this, you build this figure like this, right? You got this beautiful circuit. Now I want to reference it. Well, another thing LaTeX does that's really nice is allows you to call figure and then the figure name. Here it's called figure example. You can see it's referenced right here within the figure body. And then in the actual text, it will number it for you and just print out figure one. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, because then you don't have to keep up with figure numbers. So if you build your entire paper and then add a figure later, you don't have to go through and renumber all of them because every time the LaTeX compiles, it automatically corrects all your figure numbers um, and all your references within the text. So that's a huge benefit. There are small things buried throughout this example text that are maybe just nice to know. For instance, if I want to create in LaTeX, um, this character, the E with the accent. I don't honestly even know what it's called. But if I wanted to, if I wanted to do that, it's going to look like this. So normally things like this, when I don't know how to do them, all I do is just go search on Google, um, and you can pretty quickly find how to represent certain characters or whatever you need in LaTeX. I built this command called tab. To be honest, I don't particularly use it a lot, but it's useful because up here in the preamble, that's how you might go about building a command if you want to build a custom command. Another thing worth looking at is this character right here. This is um, a double single quote. It's the one right under the escape key on Windows at the top left. Um, it's much different than this character. Um, you'll notice in the document itself, and this is discussed in the text, this tab comes out looking like an open and close quotation marks. But if I use this same character to open and close the quotation marks in the text, it comes out looking like two close quotation marks. So open and close quotation marks are actually different characters. Equations. So I've included an example, and technically in IEEE format, the equation is supposed to look like part of the sentence. So if you read here, um, it reads the current I sub C uh, TD is, can be modeled as this equation where I N and I L are input and inductor currents respectively, right? So that would be, this right here would be a good sentence in a published research paper. Um, but in the actual code, what this looks like is a few things. So if you want to include an equation, this is the syntax. 
So if like if I wanted to build another one, I would maybe copy this, go down, build another one, and then if I compile this, it will uh, show up right right below it, and it'll be numbered as the second equation. It automatically keeps up with the numbers. So you can see now I've got. I'll zoom in here. I've got equation one and equation two. So just like your figures, just like your references, um, LaTeX is going to keep track of the equations and the equation numbers. Um, so similar to referencing a figure in the text, what you're going to do is just call the figure um, with the same command, reference. So let's say I, I'll just actually go ahead and copy this for you guys. And we'll put it right here in the text reference right here I've labeled it equation one change that to equation one and this can be my example I'll put some dashes around it and then I'll go ahead and recompile and in the text itself what you'll see now is the number uh, the number of the equation the reason it's saying two is because I have two instances of equation one so you would never want to do that. You can see up here it's actually throwing an error. So that was a terrible example. Um, working it out in real time. Now it says equation two. If I recompile, I've labeled them different things now over here. So now this two should change to a one because it automatically keeps up with that stuff for me. See right here, so now it's a one. So actually that's a great example of what not to do. Don't label the equations the same thing. You're supposed to change the label. So I've included tables. Tables are non-trivial. There's a few different ways you can do them. I've included one example of how to do tables in LaTeX just to get you started. But I mean, pretty much what's gonna come down to is if you need to do something and you gotta try to figure it out, just Google it, honestly. LaTeX is just a game of Googling over and over anytime you have a question. And then if we, uh, if we scroll down, you can see the conclusions section of the IEEE paper. Um, this is where you're going to acknowledge uh, your sponsor, your, you know, your professor, anything like that. So let's say you're done, you've got, uh, you got your project in a good place, or you just want to back it up. You can go up here to menu, click source, and it's going to download a zip file, similar to the one I gave you at the beginning of the tutorial. Or you can click PDF, it's going to download your most recent compile of the file itself. Okay. That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully this tutorial helped get you on your feet. Now you can get out there and write some incredible LaTeX papers. Good luck.